Yeah, good evening, everyone. Can you please see my screen? Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Uh, just a minute. Uh, due to unavoidable reasons, so I'm going to start the session just two minutes late. Um, first, let me uh, introduce. Uh, yesterday, I have given a beautiful knowledge of uh, uh, how to uh, solve the problem. Okay, uh, how the problem-solving approach should be encouraged as a uh, software programmer. How Python will help us to do the job. Okay. Now, then I went to what are the basic uh, features of Python. Uh, then we have stopped our discussion. What is the job prospectus for Python? I have given. Okay. Now, if you permit me, today I wanted to introduce uh, some of the basic important uh, data structures that are available in Python for a few minutes. Shall I go ahead? Can you see my screen? Yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, please. Now, uh, first and foremost, things let us uh, start our discussion uh, with uh, any programming language. If you want to learn any programming language, first and foremost job is uh, we need to learn what are identifiers. OK? Identifiers are just nothing but naming conventions. OK? Identifier nothing but just naming conventions. How to name a variable in corresponding programming language? Every language has their own rules, naming conventions. Okay. Now, for example, in Python, if you want to create a variable, what are the basic rules for creating a variable? Okay. Can I give you one or two rules? First and foremost job is uh, the first character or first letter of that uh, identifier must be a character okay it can be either uppercase character or it can be a lowercase character okay after this first you can use either a number or you can use any other characters but uh, the first character need not be a digit it should not be a digit can you please respond hello yeah, just give me one minute. Uh, still, it is blocking the thing. Yeah, the first it is. It should not be a digit. You cannot start any identifier with a digit, but you can start with underscore. Underscore is permittable. Okay. Now, I will write some numbers. Can you please tell me whether it is uh, valid or not? Uh, Hundred. Is it a valid identifier? It is invalid no, sir. because it has started with a number. Now I will give underscore hundred. Is it valid? Now it is. Yeah, valid. sir. Now I'm giving a and hundred. Still, it is valid because the first character must be a character. It can be any a small a to small z or capital A to capital Z. Then you can write any number of characters. Now, first and foremost job, you have to remember this point and okay now then. Second point is uh, how to assign values for the variables. Now, in programming language, as like C language, uh, what we will do is we have to write a storage location. Storage location. Then you have to write data type. Then you have to write variable name is equal to value. This is the basic syntax. Uh, you have to use in C language whenever you declare any variables. Whereas in Python, storage location means uh, where you are going to store this variable. Okay, like it may be register or it can be memory. Okay, it can be any other location. Data types are nothing but uh, what is the type of the data? Type of the data. Basically speaking, if you take any programming language, basically the data types are integer. Okay, then you will have another data type called as float. You will have another data type called as string. You will have another data type called as boolean. <coughs> depending, upon the, 
depending upon the programming languages uh, we are going to take these kind of integers are nothing but any number any number okay it may be positive or it may be negative float variables are nothing but uh, it should be a real number what is the meaning of real number after writing some number after dot you have to, you should have some digits this is called as real numbers okay after dot you are going to write up to six digits can you please uh, mute yourself from your side indy those who are in the class can you please yeah now here some for example if you go to other languages like uh, c++ c java there you will have another data type called as double what is the meaning of double after dot you are going to have 12 digits mostly used in scientific applications now another data type is called a string string is nothing but a sequence of characters okay now in python it supports integer it supports float and it supports string but a uh, string can be any single character any single character or group of characters group of characters both are called as string okay look at here in c language if you want to create a string there is a data type called as character character c equal to a in single quotes you have to give it this is called as character that means i can store only single character whereas in python you can write uh, either a single character in single quotes or double quotes with single character or uh, any characters that will be considered as string single character double character triple character anything is called as string okay na any single character or group of characters can be called as strings okay now next one is boolean to represent a true value or false value okay we are going to use uh, two variables called uh, true as well as false M mostly true represents as one false represents as zero clear for you these are called as data type this is called here i am going to write variable name just now i told that variable name must be first it must be a character the first first let digit of a character must be character is equal to i can assign for example if i am assigning 100 uh, this is called as integer for example if i am assigning 100.50 it will be treated as a float if i am assigning any single quotes or double quotes so any string that is called as string clear these are called as values is it okay till now can you please respond yeah sir yeah now let me go to new page yeah another thing is just now we have discussed about what are identifiers then next one is a simple we have a small discussion on data types okay apart from that uh, you should be very good in operators the another important most of the important thing is operators okay for example let us take a small thing a equal to 10 i have taken b equal to 20 here 10 and 20 are called as values okay a and b are called as variables okay now for example if i do like this c equal to a plus b here equal to and plus are called as operators a and b also called as operands now what will happen a equal to 10 plus 20 now 30 will be stored in c now is it okay now what is the meaning of operator operator changes meaning of operator is operator changes the value values of operands okay clear now what this equal to operator it is doing whatever the result i got 30 it is assigning to a variable called as c so operator changes the values of operands okay earlier c doesn't have any value now c got 30 here 
can you respond i can write uh, so many kinds of operations like addition operation subtraction operation multiplication operation division operation mod operation exponential operation and so on so many operators are available okay python supports around 6 to 7 levels of operations can you please respond this is called as operator clear can you please respond uh, sure. yeah. okay sir now now the next one is uh, now you can ask one question sir what will happen now you, you to i told that uh, in python no need to specify the data type in python no need to specify the data type when you are in c c++ java or c sharp you need to specify the data type like this like uh, int a equal to 10 here 10 is called as value a is called as variable int is called as data type okay whereas in python no need to specify this data type now same thing if i want to create a float variable i have to write like this in c language float c equal to 10.50 f f represents float in python no need to specify this float type no need to specify the int type now you can ask one question sir how it will be decided okay whenever i am assigning a value 10 in the variable in the memory it is going to create a pi int object and which is going to assign a value a equal to 10 that's it this will be done by the python interpreter okay as a programmer you will not deal with this okay then internally what will happen whenever you create a variable a it is going to create a, a unique 16 digit id a unique 16 digit id for you okay that is for every variable you are going to have a unique 16 digit id in python is it okay for example whenever i do like this what will happen it is going to create a pi float object i will showcase in practically in all these things now for example c equal 10.50 this will be stored in the but f will not specify in python whatever the value has specified uh, this float will be decided by the value which you have assigned to the variable it is not by you whereas in programming language like c c plus plus java you have mandatorily you have to specify the data types clear for you can you please respond now next one is very important big thing what you should know is uh, conditions and loops Now, just give me one minute. Now, what is a condition? Now, for example, let us take, if you take this as a program, a program is nothing but sequence of instructions. Normally, all these sequence of instructions will be executed one after other, okay? These sequence of instructions will be executed one after other okay but uh, there are some situations after the statement uh, i should go to fifth statement after the statement uh, now here i will write some small condition here i will write some small condition if the condition is true i will be jumped to the statement five if the condition is false i should be jumped to the statement seven so what is happening this sequence of instructions we may not follow some occasions where this is called as conditions what is the meaning of condition a if for example a equal to 10 why you take it a is greater than or equal to 20. can you please respond whether this condition is true or false a is 10 10 is greater than or equal to 20. can you please false. respond yes it is false okay now in programming what we will do is if condition one if this condition one is true i wanted to execute some statements if this condition is false i will i will write uh, one statement called yes i will execute other other set of statements okay depending upon the trueness of the condition i will execute some set of statements in this case 
I may not execute my statement sequentially. Sometimes I should move from statement two to statement seven, statement three to statement five. This is called as conditions. So in programming language like Python, we have only one condition called as if, but various forms of if conditions are available in Python for us. Any queries? I'm touching each and every syllabus point and whatever I have given here, please look at here. I'm touching each and everything, identifiers, operators, data types, conditions, and low. Each and every pinpoint I'm touching in the syllabus to give you a basic knowledge of what we are going to do in the syllabus. Can you please respond? Now, now shall I go for uh, what is a loop? Now, next one is uh, we have another important call as loop. Loop is a me loop means which is going to execute, which is going to execute. For example, I have some set of statements like this. I wanted to group these statements and these statements I have to execute repeatedly. Okay. Only these statements I wanted to re execute repeatedly. Okay. Which is going to execute repeatedly. Okay, what is which group of statements? Group of statements going to be executed repeatedly until some condition satisfy. Okay. If the condition is not satisfy, this will not execute until the, until some condition satisfy. Okay. For example, I have taken a equal to one. I have taken b equal to ten. Now a is greater than ten. Can you please respond? A is greater than B. Can you please respond? No, no, sir. Because this condition is no, I will not go into this loop. For example, if I write uh, there are two conditions for and uh, while. Now, these two are called as loops. They will make the condition. When this condition is true, I will go to the statements and uh, I will execute some set of statements. And I then I will increment plus. Then A will become two. two is, now, until this condition satisfy, I wanted to execute some structure repeatedly. That is called as loop. Clear? Yes. Yeah. Now, let me take a small uh, new important concept. Now, most important thing is uh, Python has uh, around five to six data structures. Python supports so many data structures. Like uh, first one is a uh, range function. Range function, which generates sequence of numbers. OK, now I will tell you a small example, range of five. What is the purpose of range of five? Which is going to generate numbers from zero to four what is the meaning of the zero one two three four five will not be included here whatever the number which will not be which will be excluded clear for you for example if i ask you range of 10 can you please respond what will be the outcome which is going to generate sequence of numbers from zero to nine, nine. clear clear yes sir yes yeah, sir now yeah, you can sir. ask one question now you can ask one question range of there is another syntax called range of uh, m comma n where m is the starting location i can give my own starting location i can also give what is my stop location now here what i will do is a range of 1 comma 10 1 is the start position i'll take 11 this is the stop position so i wanted to generate numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 will not be included. Got it? In all these positions, the incrementation is by default 1. Now, sometimes if you want to increment the values to, I have one more syntax called uh, range of m comma n comma step. Some people call this also called as increment or decrement. Now, I'll ask one question. Range of 1 comma 11 comma 2 can you please respond what will be the outcome first number will be 1 
1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 2, 5. 5 plus 2, 7. 7 plus 2, 9. 9 plus 2, 11. So 11 will not be included. So my outcome will be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Will you agree? Hello? Sir. Sir. Yeah, sir. Yeah, please. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Now, I'll ask one question. Can you please Sir, respond? Actually, the range, in, uh, range from uh, M to N is there, right? Yes. Uh, Here, there I you have... Yes, please. Once again, repeat it. This is start position. Uh, not... mm. yeah. Please, please, continue. Sir, actually, I'm not asking that. Beside of that, range of M, comma N, start, stop, there is the... Step. You said Step. range Are of you... one to one to ten or one to eleven, sir. One to eleven, I asked. One comma eleven, oh, comma two. This two stands for this two stands for increment. Okay. Now, one plus two is three. Three plus two is five. This is increment value. I have asked. Clear, na? Not that one, sir. Beside of that. Uh, this. This one? Uh, no, sir. Uh, range. Oh, yeah, yeah, sir. That one. M, sir. that one, sir. Uh, I will just wait. I will uh, go back. Can you please tell me where I uh, uh, just just a minute. Sir, uh, you today, told that range of 10 is uh, 0 to 9, right? Yes, 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 yes. After that, range of m comma n and range of 1 comma 11 or 1 comma 10, sir, that is? 1 comma 11 I have given. 1 comma 11 means sir, starting number will be 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 will not be included. Okay, okay. okay Got it now? Yeah. Now, yeah, got I'll it, ask, sir. I'll ask one more question. Now, can you give me one minute? Now, let me change this. Yeah. Range of? 1 comma 11 comma minus 1. Can you please respond what will be the outcome? First number is 1. 1 minus 1 will be 0. 0 mm -hmm. minus 1? Minus 1. Minus 1. Minus 1. Yes. Now, it should not happen like this. The first number is, uh, if I give in this way, it is sometimes okay let me uh, minus value i cannot now first let me take 3 then we'll go for minus value give me 1 comma 11 comma plus 3 3 1 1, one plus 3 is 4 4 plus 3 is 7 7 plus 3 is 10 10 plus 3 is 13 13 is out of bounds so i will not consider okay now 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 so range what is the basic functionality of range? It is going to generate sequence of numbers. Okay, now? Now, the remaining negative values we'll see in the coming session. Now, another important point in data structure is a string object. String is called a sequence of characters. Okay? Okay, enclosed either in single quotes either in single quotes or double quotes. Both are valid. Double quotes. Look at here. Now, s equal to Python. Now, s1 equal to, in single quotes also Python. Both are valid. Either you give with the double quotes or with single quotes, it is called a string. String is the sequence of characters enclosed in the... Now, what is the purpose of this? Now, whenever I create a string, which all the characters will be stored in continuous memory locations like this, P, Y, T, H, O, N. Now look at here, all the characters are stored in continuous memory location. Whenever we store the data in continuous memory locations, I can access using its indexing. What is the meaning of indexing? I have to use within square brackets. Within this square brackets, I will write some integer. Okay. Now, the string can be accessed. Look at here. Any string can be accessed 
in two directions. First one is forward direction. Second one is backward direction. Okay. In forward direction, there is a formula called 0 to n minus 1. Now, let me write some numbers here. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What is my starting number is 0. Ending number is n minus 1 is 6 minus 1. Totally, they have 6 characters. 6 minus 1 equal to 5, na? 0 to 5. Clear for you? Now, can you please respond? What is the backward direction? Forward direction means I'm going to read the data from left to right. Left to right. Now, how to do backward direction? Read now backward direction means uh, reading data from right to left. Whenever I'm reading data from right to left, I should do this formula minus one to minus n. Here, this is minus one minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. Got it, Andy? Now, if I want, if I give a number s for the string, how can I access s of 0? Can you please tell me what is the output? s of 0 is p. Okay? s of 1, what is the value for s of 1? It is y. Clear? s of 2, I can access t. In the same way, I can also access backward direction. S of minus 1, which represents n. S of minus 2, which represents O. Are you getting me? So, like this, I can read the data in forward direction as well as in backward direction. Can you please respond? Okay, sir. Yeah. Now, let me clear the screen. Yeah. Next to data structure, which is important, is a list data structure. List. Okay, let me tell you one simple point of list. It now it list can contain can contain any kind of data. Any kind of data. This is the beauty of a list. So I can store integer, I can store float, I can store string. I can store boolean, anything I can store in Python with the help of square brackets. List is also called as a heterogeneous data type. Heterogeneous. What is the meaning of heterogeneous? More than one data type. More than one data type. Clear? What is the meaning of more than one data type? Here I have stored integer as 100. Float, I am storing 100.50, it is a float. String means uh, it is a python. Boolean means uh, I will store it as true. Now, am I storing more than one data type? Yes, I am storing one more than one. Whereas in range function and the string object, uh, I am storing only sequence of characters here. Here I am storing sequence of numbers. Whereas in the list object, I can store any kind of data. Is it okay? Now, there is another object Thank called. You. Yes. Chupul also do the same thing. Chupul also do the same thing. Any kind of data. But uh, what is the difference between list data structure and tuple data structure? List is mutable. Mutable. Very, very important. What is the meaning of mutable? I can add my data at any time. I can change my data at any time i can delete my data at any time i can do any operation now in chupul is a immutable what is the meaning of immutable we cannot change it can't change once you create a chupul you cannot update it clear this is the fourth data structure okay if you permit me i'll open another data structure shall i go no. yeah sir there yeah, there is another data structure called as dictionary. Okay, now the beauty of dictionary data structure is here the data will be stored in the form of a key and a value pairs. Value. For example, if I want to access this value 100, my key is uh, maybe I will take K1 is my key. If I know this key, then only I can access this value. Otherwise, I cannot access this data. Now, 
dictionaries can be stored in the form of four square brackets clear dictionary stores data in the form of and value okay keys are always unique every house its own have a own unique key na if i know the key then only i can access this value so you 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 have some in safeguard information with the help of dictionaries clear there is another data structure called as set the basic purpose of set is used to eliminate duplicate values okay now look at the syllabus now slowly we are teaching what is a string what is a list what is a tuple what is a dictionary and what is a set okay for example if you want to get a job if you are good in the only the uh, if you want to go for only for python programmer you should be concentrate more on these data structures okay list string list tuple list dictionary and set you have to do so many examples okay once if you know this serial number 4 5 6 7 6 you can do anything in python clear any questions now now after doing some sort of data structures like this uh, we have some sort of some additional problems okay like uh, you have some basic concept of functions okay now what is the purpose of function i'll tell you okay now there are two things that are very very important functions and modules functions and modules uh this is a, because it is a demo class simply i'm touching the each and every topic and otherwise each and every topic will day will take minimum one and one day to two days and they are very big, big big topics clear can you please respond yes now now let me tell you what is the function okay now i have some set of statements i have some set of statements okay now uh i have some statements so i wanted to this 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 set of statements i can give some name to him this is called as name whenever i call it with name all these set of statements will be executed and it produces some output okay you can call this set of statements for any number of times what is the purpose of function okay a for a function is a set of statements okay okay these statements will be executed will be executed to implement a specific job to implement a specific job okay now every function will have some input now if you call this as a function 1 every function will produce some output clear can you please respond what is the basic need of functions in programming okay functions provide uh, reusability what is the meaning of reusability if i write a function with 1000 lines of 1000 loc okay same thousand lines of code if i want to write another time not required simply i'll call with its name this thousand lines of code will come and execute by default okay now like this if i combine several set of functions uh, i will call it as modules set of set of related functions set of related functions is called as module okay Do you have the basic knowledge of C or C plus plus or Java? Any one of you? For example, if you have C language, you are going to write call uh, hash include hash include stdio dot h. Have you heard about it? Hello. Yeah, sir. 
Yeah, for example, sir. if you go for Java, you are going to use uh, import Java dot something package now io dot star. io is a input output package like that. Uh, in Python also, there are so many modules. Simply, we are going to use import the module. My job will be done by using functions and modules. My, my job will become very 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 simple. Okay, Python has a uh, hundreds and thousands of built-in functions what is the meaning of built-in function for example if i want to read anything input from the keyboard there is a function called input function that's it if i want to print anything on the console there is a function called print function but i don't know what is the inside logic of this print function every function is called as black box simply we will give some input and it produces some output and clear can you please respond? Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah. Now, yes, after this function, so we will have the beautiful concepts of file IO operations. File IO operations are used to read and write the data from the text files. Now, now just give me one minute. Now, next concept is file io operations what is the purpose of file io operation if i want to safeguard my data if i want to save the data of my program data of my program what we will do we have like uh, i will write a note i will take a notepad i will save all my data into a file this is called as writing writing data to a file afterwards if i want to use my data i will read the data from a file read data from a file what here what i am doing i am storing some text data into the notepad okay by using all file io operations then let me discuss about uh, another important concept called databases. Databases. How many of you heard about Oracle? SQL Server, MySQL. Any one of you? These are called as databases. Or have you heard about SQL called Structure Query Language? Yes, sir. yes now if i want to store my data in a more uh, structured format uh, i will store my data in the form of tables tables also called as relations for example if i want to store employee data employee now what is the meaning of database set of related data relations yes related data for example let us take employee number employee name salary designation location of the employee all these are called as various attributes all the related data i'm taking as uh, one employee okay now now by using this i can by using sql i can do four operations storing data and uh, updating data deleting delete terminate various Select operation. This is also called as curd operation. C U R D. C stands for creation. U stands for update, retrieve, and delete. Here, I wanted to use a data source called SQLite. Now, SQLite is one of the database like uh, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL. You can also write. Uh, you can also connect to Oracle or SQL Server also. Okay. This is this is my chapter number twelve. Clear? Yeah, okay. sir. Now, yeah. From, chapter, yeah, from chapter number 13 onwards, uh, we are going to deal with uh, object oriented programming. Okay, chapter number 13 to 19, which discusses about uh, object oriented programming. Okay, I don't touch them right now. Okay, now chapter number 19 is for doing mathematical operations, chapter number 20 he is used for data analysis and chapter number 21 for machine learning applications chapter number 22 is for drawing pictures onto the screen 
okay this is the syllabus i wanted to teach you from the the day when we start the syllabus mostly uh, tomorrow or monday monday onwards we are going to start the officially syllabus is it okay this is only purely python syllabus and my syllabus comes then if you are interested i will also make you to do a small one week project and okay maybe one week or two weeks it will take uh, i will also help you to do a small project in python okay this is what i wanted to discuss today